So many congratulations as you are celebrating 25th anniversary of the Redwood Edge this year. Please uh, tell us the story of the Redwood Edge. We have uh, done now more than 3,200 workshops uh, for over 175,000 people in 26 countries uh, for 150 clients that we have. So still the journey continues. to WGF iTalks. Today, I am in talk with Mr. Prakash Rohira from India. He's the director of the Redwood Edge, India's leading corporate training consultants. We will learn about Mr. Rohira's personal and professional passions, his highly impactful and rewarding thoughts and philosophies, and uh, the promises he holds in his heart uh, for himself and countless others out there in the world through a session of questions and answers. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate. And uh, thank you, everyone who's tuned in. Uh, and namaste. Appreciate for being part of this one-to-one. Uh, uh, -one. Thank you. Nice. Thank you very much. Let's start with the question straight. Uh, I would try to paint a canvas for our viewers with several bright and inspiring colors of your professional life. Our viewers seek inspiration uh, from personal challenges and triumphs too. So I would also slightly touch upon your personal life and future aspirations. Okay. Yeah. Please tell us about yourself in your own words for our viewers. Uh, I think uh, uh, ex-banker, if I may say, uh, uh, and uh, someone who was always passionate about training and then uh, circumstances always uh, create uh, some kind of opportunities. And uh, in 97, I had a, I had a problem with my lungs and uh, whatever reasons, uh, the fact was that I could not continue the corporate career and uh, moved out of that and uh, moved to Pune and we started uh, the firm, The Redwood Edge. In fact, uh, Hasina, the good news is that this year we're celebrating 25 years of a firm. So, oh. uh, so we are having a one-to-one -one on that. So it's a, it's a milestone moment for all of us uh, okay. in Redwood Edge. All of us have been part of this, uh, all our clients, all our well-wisher, all our friends, so uh, that's that's about me. And uh, uh, now we do training. Uh, it's been a journey, like I said, of 25 years. We have uh, done uh, more than 3,200 workshops uh, for over 175,000 people in 26 countries uh, for 150 clients that we have. So still the journey continues, but uh, that's a little bit brief about what we do. I'm also a coach uh, for a few CEOs and CXOs in India and outside. So many congratulations as you are celebrating 25th anniversary of the Redwood Edge this year. Lots of wishes for continuing worldwide success. Whatever you have shared is so impressive. Thank you. Uh, taking our conversation further on your exciting journey, please uh, tell us the story of the Redwood Edge. Uh, how, how did you establish it? Uh, why did you choose to call it the Redwood Edge? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, like I was sharing in my earlier uh, response that it happened by chance, happened by destiny. Uh, I had my medical issues. Uh, so just to elaborate on that, uh, I was in, the, in and out of hospital for 11 months. My last job was with uh, Bank of America. I was a very happy banker. Uh, earlier, before that, I used to work with Citibank. And I had no intention of moving on my own. But circumstances uh, and fate have uh, other things in mind. And uh, due to the complications, my lungs were literally down to 21% capacity. Uh, I was out of action for 11 months. Mm. So I had no option but to move out of corporate life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that time, my daughters were three months and three years. Uh, my wife was a homemaker. Dad was uh, retired from RBI. And mom had passed away. And the only earning member is not earning. So it was a challenging time. Uh, we decided to move to Pune from Delhi. Uh, the pollution levels of Delhi were 
beyond uh, you know whatever like i said they were tough for me mm -hmm. and we started this uh, journey like we always say in my workshop that when a when a door closes at least a window opens somewhere and the the skill set i had were in the training field Though I was a business guy and a line guy, but I felt comfortable doing the training journey. Like any startup, any business you start, we had our ups and downs. We started and uh, uh, it's been a wonderful, eventful journey. Regarding your question about why the name, the Redwood Edge. So interestingly, when I was in Bank of America, I had gone for a workshop to, to California, in, in, I mean, to San Francisco in, in California. Mm -hmm. And nearby, there are these Redwood Forests. Okay. I had heard about it. I went to the tourist and uh, got to know a little bit more about the trees and how how tall they grow. They're really big. They're really huge. And they fight with each other for oxygen. So that part remained with me here. And when I was in ICU and in hospital beds, my wife put up the, the photographs of the redwood trees in my room, in the hospital room. I didn't know that, that one day after a few years, that will be the inspiration for uh, our company's name because they fight for oxygen and they fight to survive and grow taller. So that's why the name, the Redwood Edge. How wonderful. How nice. Thank you very much for sharing such a heartfelt and inspiring part of your life. Mm, I would like to relate your passion to grow tall professionally as the inherent quality of top leaders. So my next two questions would be about leader and leadership qualities. A lot has been written and said about leadership. I also have a lot of concepts and queries, some of which are clear, some are not. Um, a very general question most of our viewers would be interested in is, uh, are leaders born or can anyone become a leader if one works hard and smart? Okay. I'm a firm uh, believer of the fact that leaders are created leaders are made. Uh, it's and anybody's a leader. It's not the title that you have. It's what you're able to do. Uh, you know, children in the family are leaders because they are doing a few things. Uh, team members joining a company are leaders because leadership is the act. Leadership is what you do. Leadership has never been, will never be a position or a title. It's sometimes uh, uh, unfortunate to say that the more I have the title on my visiting card, the more I am responsible for various things. Of course you are, but everybody's a leader. And uh, we really have a shortage of leaders in the world. I think as a world, we are overmanaged and underled. So if you look at, there are millions of books, thousands of books available on leadership, but you still have the paucity of leaders uh, all around and you can see it and feel it everywhere. So simple answer, leaders become leaders uh, through opportunities, through challenges that they face and a belief that yes, they can make a difference. They provide hope wherever they are. They give people what you call as a path and they create that to fulfillment. Great, that clarifies a lot. Thank you. Um, and going specific, what uh, are your best leadership qualities? Um, what best leadership qualities can someone have? Okay, for me, uh, for my leadership qualities, uh, I, think, I think just the passion to lead uh, when I say lead, I don't mean uh, leading a team or lead, but just to, just to do something different. Uh, for me, the leadership is a power of uh, uh, a plus one, something different that you can do. Uh, and I think the intensity that one brings on to make a difference in someone's life. To me, uh, that's leadership. Uh, also, uh, with a strong focus on execution. Uh, so that would probably be my, my strengths. Uh, and I think, uh, if I may say so, uh, uh, having worked in the corporate sector earlier with Citibank, HCL, her first job, and I must thank my company, HCL Citibank and Bank of America, and now on my own for 25 years, uh, I would say that uh, we need to be a student, as John F. Kennedy said, that leadership and learning are indispensable. So as long as you can do that, you're on the right path. That's what I say for me. Uh, what the next question you asked me, Hasina? Uh, sir, the next part of the question was, uh, what best leadership qualities can someone have? Mm -hmm. so, 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 so for leaders, I think, uh, I personally believe that I call it the five eyes mantra. Uh, five eyes mantra to me is number one, leadership journey starts with inspiration. 
So you've got to be inspiring and being inspired. Number two is involvement. You need to have involvement with yourself, with, the, in, with stakeholders, with your surroundings. Number three, you got to innovate as the journey progresses. You got to keep adding on. You got to be uh, constantly thinking how to do it better. You got to keep adding value. Fourth one is integrity. Don't let that go down. Integrity is what gives you character, that what people kind of respect you for. Mm -hmm. And the fifth one is clearly the intention to execute. If the intention is right, execution will take place because leadership is a journey from vision to execution. So if the intention is not there, execution will not be the same. Right. So that's what I call as leadership, the five eyes. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, I can understand why your workshops are one of the best in the world. Great. Uh, so my next question is, um, please share some challenges you may have faced in your life uh, and, and how did you overcome them? Uh, what should be a leader's attitude in the face of challenges uh, or failure? I think lots of challenges, like I shared with you. Uh, uh, it's not easy uh, to, to be able to uh, start, uh, live a settled life and uh, move on to something new. So any entrepreneur, any uh, person who starts, uh, you know, faces those challenges. So normal challenges, there are business faces. But I think what's helped me uh, along the journey has been the belief, uh, especially my family. I, I must share this in my, in fact, in my TED talk, I mentioned that but when I lost my job, my wife mentioned, I didn't marry a bank American, I married a Prakash. Earlier used to go to work, now both of them go to work for our daughters. So uh, if your family rallies around you, your village should rally around you, you kind of get the confidence because uh, it's not easy out there uh, to make a mark, to make a difference. Uh, so I think uh, uh, I must say that uh, one learns a lot of things along the journey and uh, challenges have been many. Uh, I think uh, COVID was a challenge itself recently because I personally had a bad COVID. Uh, I was down for almost 30 days and this was mm. my first wave. Mm. So I'm thankful to God. I'm thankful to all the people around who helped and rallied around. So mm -hmm. challenges continue. Uh, of course, training was impacted during COVID uh, as well. So we had to evolve, uh, go the digital way uh, and uh, and uh, learn. So so in fact, I was surprised that uh, we actually did uh, in these uh, two years since COVID has hit us uh, about 200 virtual workshops as well. So oh. I think one learns to, 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 to kind of evolve and find ways. And I'm technically, <laughs> A little challenged, I was confessed that bit. Uh, but still, I think it's been a wonderful journey uh, for me. So challenges will come. That's part of life. At, as long as you think that yes, uh, some challenges we can't handle, some then we will we'll face. That's how life moves on. True, sir. Life moves on. Um, however, I must mention here how great you have been throughout your professional journey, despite uh, numerous challenges, gradually creating the tall organization that the Redwood as is. Um, that brings me uh, to my next question, as I have watched uh, your highly impressive TEDx talk. Uh, TEDx speakers are considered one of the best in the world. How was your experience at uh, TEDx? Okay, thank you for that uh, little uh, uh, statement. Uh, I think uh, I loved it. I, I, I kind of, uh, it's an audience that you uh, gain access to. Uh, mm -hmm. 18 minute talk, you have to communicate your ideas. Uh, and it, I think it comes straight from the heart, what you feel about. Uh, so I loved it, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's been about three, four years now. So uh, yeah, uh, great memories of it. Uh, and I feel proud when I'm, when I'm doing workshops and people have seen the talk. So kind of, it just kind of acts as a very positive reinforcement, uh, Hasina. Right. You have shared it very humbly and very simply. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I would like to explore a little more on leadership and life. Um, so according to you, what is more difficult, being a mentor or being a student? Um, also, what is more difficult, being a leader or being a follower? Let me answer the second one first. Sure. Uh, I'm a firm believer, let's not use the word followers. Okay. Uh, I think we should just use the word leaders create leaders, period. So if you are creating and you have a different thought process that followers, I think uh, it's not going to be long term. Uh, we are not in uh, in hero worshipping kind of thing in, in leadership. We can admire a leader, respect a leader. Uh, but I think leaders is about carrying the team together 
And the biggest onus for leaders is to create more leaders. So that's my response to your second statement. Lovely. First statement of being mentor and mentee, it's a mutual relationship. It's a symbiotic relationship. Both have to have a connection. Both have to have one very strong feeling that is intent to make a difference. The feedback, the discussion point is only one to make each other grow from the time they were last time. If you're not able to create that, then the relationship is going to be short term and not be able to get the full benefits that the relationship and the spectrum of the relationship provides. So mentor and mentee uh, is, a, is a sacrosanct relationship. I'm a coach for uh, so many leaders and I think the relationship is based on one fact that common, that we are coming together uh, with a common agenda of making a development. Coach also learns as well as there is a development taking place for the coachee. And I think uh, it keeps us going when you see some of the comments that people share. Uh, it's very fulfilling, I must say, as you know. Right, sir. Thank you. Um, I was a student of philosophy myself. So I wanted to ask you this question. Um, though everyone would have his or her own definition, according to you, what is life and what is the best way to live it? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, to me, life is a one-time journey where we are focusing from exploration to execution. Where we are given a chance to make a difference. Do our part. Do whatever best you can do. And I think very important part is be in the moment. A lot of us today are not happy. Uh, as, a, as a country, India is low on the happiness index. So I think what can we do to make that happiness index move up? What we can do, like I keep saying, I can't change the world, but I can change my world. And what's my world? My family, my office, my, my social circle, my community. Uh, what difference I can make? Uh, so uh, to me, it's about being there. Uh, I have a line for it called the triangle of life, which I summarized for life is that you and I came to this planet only for three words, and I call the triangle of life which is fun, knowledge, and inspiration. Fun, people like you, have fun in life. And I, in fact, uh, yesterday I put a quote on LinkedIn saying, have fun with people, not at people. So enjoy whatever makes you happy, just do that. Second is knowledge, maximize it, gain knowledge. Fun, people like you, knowledge, people respect you. And the third part, which keeps the momentum going forward is inspiration. So to me, that's the mantra for life. Uh, and uh, when we came in, yes, we know, but when we go, we don't know. So just enjoy being there. Easier said than done, honestly. But, uh, and, you know, also I like to say that, uh, you know, don't take life so seriously. Uh, you know, it's fine. You know, it's so th you don't have to lose the, uh, you know, the happiness, the movements that is, we, we don't celebrate events. We don't celebrate movements. And I think life is telling us, hey, you got an opportunity, celebrate. You got a promotion, you become a father, you get married. Uh, there is an anniversary. Uh, you know, India the other day won the Thomas Cup. Uh, I think these are moments to say, wow. You know, so celebrate those moments, feel the pride, uh, and uh, and move on. And you know, again, we'll see what happens next. Thank you very much. How wonderful thoughts you give. Very nice. Uh, generally, um, Top executives worldwide seek leadership tips uh, for great success in their professional lives. However, I wanted to ask you, are leadership tips relevant or important only to professionals? Uh, or are they also equally important and relevant to non-professionals, even housewives? I think to me, leadership starts at home. Uh, let through this platform, you're talking my salute to all the ladies, uh, first of all, uh, for what they do. Uh, as I remember my mom, uh, mm -hmm. I have no idea uh, with the limited income my parents had, how they gave us education in, in a good school, in a good college. So I think something they must have done, which is leadership, uh, optimizing resources, finding a solution, right. making a difference is all about leadership. Right. So at home, in, in a, any Indian middle-class household or any household, there are leaders all around. We don't, we don't kind of recognize them enough. We don't give them the, the credit that they deserve. Yeah. 
but it's there. And uh, my salute to all of them. Uh, I'm a father of two daughters, so I, I, I know, and my wife, you know, how, how they rally around and what they do. So, so I think it's, it's everyone. Professional, yes. Uh, anybody else is a leader, like I said at the beginning of my uh, interview. So all qualities, in fact, I would say that some professionals can learn these qualities from people at home. So, and you, you can see some examples of inspiration, motivation, that how uh, uh, people make a difference. I mean, somebody is putting his pension fund into building a road in Hyderabad, or, or somebody going out and do, doing something for, for, for a greener environment, a greener planet. Uh, they are doing whatever they can at their level. So that's leadership at its best. Even in the society that you stay, uh, somebody will pick up a few things, make, make it cleaner, find a way to conserve water. That's leadership at its best. Uh, they may not have the qualification, they may not have all that, but they are leaders and never even once dismiss them for the contribution they bring in, in their lives, in other people's lives, and maybe, let me add, to make leaders more effective. Thanks a lot. This answer touched my heart more than the others. Uh, for your salute to women, thanks for understanding our challenges and uh, efforts to be successful in the world. Thank you. So uh, my next question is, uh, you are a travel enthusiast. Where uh, all have you traveled? And how do you get time to travel in between your highly busy schedule? Okay. I think, uh, no, thank you. I think I always had a passion uh, apart from sports uh, was to see the world, to travel. Uh, very glad to say uh, that I've uh, been to 67 countries, uh, wow. Hasina. Uh, and uh, if you come to my... Uh, house in in the room uh, that we have we have 67 flags of the countries i've been to wow. uh, and there are some spaces and gaps uh, of course because one is an aspiration uh, for the the what you call as the bucket list you know as we call it uh, to 75 maybe god willing 100 so who knows wow. uh, how i think uh, being the right time in the right place uh, and of course uh, balancing work and life uh, some places work took me uh, and then uh, some places it was a planned holiday oh, wow. uh, so whether it is india because india has some beautiful locations whether it's overseas uh, i think i'm fortunate to say that i've seen a lot of the world still a few places to go but yeah yes yeah. so uh, and i and i think as a, it became easier because my family also loves it wonderful i'm sure traveling all over the world must be fun uh, so how do you balance work and life uh, and any tips for our viewers i think just get your priorities right uh, I think very important part is that there will be days where uh, the balance won't happen. So be it, accept it. Uh, but you can always make it the next day or the next time. Uh, the weekends are there. Uh, we, we don't celebrate weekends. Uh, we don't have major plans for weekends. Uh, and I think the family kind of starts worrying, uh, you know, you know, kids will ask parents, Ki, Papa, kya kar rahe? Mama, kya kar rahe? this weekend? We don't have major, major plans. So I think uh, sometimes you, it's up to you, but I would say that uh, uh, it's your, if you want to, you will. Simple statement is, how come you never miss a flight by and large? Mm -hmm. Because there's no option. Right. So if you create some kind of a thought process, that this is what I want, you will get it. Right. Uh, I think, like I said, goals are simply dreams with deadlines. So if you want to create some kind of a goal for yourself and a to-do list for today, that this is where I want to go. So, so, so whether it is, you know, going for your walk, run, playing games, music, uh, meeting friends, very important parts of life. Work is a means to enjoy life. Like I said, it's a one-time journey. So maximize it, maximize it. Definitely. Your concepts are so clear. They must be spread as much and as far as possible. Mm, as you have mentioned that uh, you have traveled about uh, 70 countries in the world. What have you observed? Do same motivational techniques and tips work all over the world or are they different in different countries or regions? Uh, very good question. Uh, I think human beings are human beings. I think first of all, I actually believe in that. Uh, the environment may be different. Or the situation may be different. Uh, the exposure may be different. The resources may be different. But basically, human beings have an alignment at a particular level. Uh, they are same at particular level and they're different at a particular level. 
So what drives different people is different. Uh, if I was to look at the happiness index of the world, different countries are different happiness index. So the motivation for them is different from a different country. So there is a, 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 a definitely a, some kind of uh, uh, external forces uh, or internal forces that kind of constitute in making that split. Uh, in a workshop situation, uh, one sees that. Uh, I think more than the workshop, it's when you're interacting with people on a social platform, you're traveling to a new country, uh, you see the culture of that country, uh, and you find that somewhere uh, people are so helpful, people are so warm, and by and large, they are that. And in some countries, uh, you know, they'll go out of the way to kind of support you. So I think it's the fabric that exists. Uh, and uh, in a workshop, of course, I think uh, I would say not more about countries, uh, I think it's more about the corporates and the individuals and the companies, uh, what culture they are having. Uh, overall, I think people are people, uh, and it's always nice to uh, meet people. And I think if you're talking about leadership, you got to love people uh, anywhere in the world because that's what uh, drives us together. Because I always say that when you join a company, uh, you join a company, you join a pyramid. You know, lots of people here, one person on the top, and the entire excitement of the journey is if you're able to, apart from the other skill set that you have are able to make excitement with the people element. Uh, and that's where you enjoy. Uh, and I've seen, you know, you see your friends around, I've seen uh, people who are comfortable, people are comfortable anywhere. So they could be in any country, they will find, they'll, they'll connect, they will, uh, what I call as flexing, you temporarily adjust your behavior to connect with a different culture. So you do that to get on with uh, uh, what I call as creating a synergy and uh, some kind of uh, uh, a social collaboration uh, with other people in some form or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I think uh, it's always fun to, to see new people and, and cultures and countries. And you look at India itself. I mean, India is so diverse. So, so you have the, the beauty of uh, every state coming in when you're traveling to that country and the, and the, and the cultures are different. And the, the, uh, you know, the normal conversation is different. The food is different. The cuisine is different. So it's just to enjoy that. I think that's what makes people going. And if you love people, you love uh, diversity, uh, you're going to love it. Lovely. You are absolutely right. Diversity and differences make us all attractive in our own unique ways. Thank you. Last but not the least, uh, please share your message for the leaders out there and those who aspire to become leaders and some point in their life okay so first of all uh, thank you for that uh, thank you for the interview i think everybody's a leader like i mentioned earlier uh, one one message for leaders uh, for anybody not just leaders everybody that don't focus on on regret focus on reflect what's happened has happened uh, and I keep saying that if it's a beautiful journey, we all have made mistakes. Uh, I made a number of times I've made mistakes. I still make mistakes. Uh, so we got ideas that you work, you work on them, you learn from them, and you move on. Because uh, hope is a harbinger for good things in life uh, to look at. Because leadership is about hope. Leadership is a belief. Leadership is going to the next level, uh, and that can only happen uh, if you start. So every individual, individ every individual first has to have a stronger self to become a stronger leader. Yeah. So a line which I often use in my workshops is prayers in your lips, dreams in your eyes, passion in your heart, and action in your hand. Who will stop you? So go well, on, make a difference in whatever way you can. And that's where the world opens up for you. And like I said, make that step because that step would be missing this beautiful planet. Wow, great. Uh, sir, I must share my true feelings. You talk like a soft breeze that relaxes you completely while instilling fresh energy to do so much in life. It was great experience talking to you. Um, personally, I and the entire team of World Growth Forums wish you the best in life. I'm sure the way you have been mentoring, inspiring, and helping executives reach outstanding goals the world owes a lot of its success and growth to you. Thank you very much for talking to World Growth Forums. Okay, all the best for your life. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye. God. Thank you.